Voting during COVID-19. The Elections Department has detailed how polling will be conducted if an election is held during the pandemic. And front and centre, ensuring everyone stays safe and healthy every step of the way. Measures include more polling stations, safe distancing and recommended time bans for voters to cast their ballot. Now, at the same time, there will be digital services to facilitate the process. Candidates will be able to prepare their papers digitally for nomination day. And come polling day, voters will be able to check the queue situation at their assigned polling station before setting off. Now, with campaigning likely to take place mainly online, regulations governing online advertising have been tightened to curb the spread of falsehoods and misinformation. First, the measures aimed at ensuring safe voting. There will be an additional 220 polling stations and voters will get a recommended time ban to cast their ballot. And there will be many other precautions in place. Here's the story. Voters will be spread out across 1,100 polling stations, up from 880. This will bring down the average number of voters at each station from 3,000 to 2,400. Based on experience, the Elections Department says most people go to the polls in the morning, and most of their time is spent waiting in line to vote. So to further thin out the crowds, voters will be allocated a recommended two-hour voting time ban. Seniors will be given two-hour slots from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. as an added precaution. If they can only vote outside of their time bans, they will be allowed to join priority queues at the polling station. One household member can accompany them if they require assistance. With these measures in place, the Elections Department says polling is likely to be quicker, which means voters will not spend more than five minutes at each station. A digital service will also be set up for voters to check the queue situation. Safety precautions at the polling stations were also revealed. There will be temperature screenings at the start of the queue. An election official will scan the voters' identity cards for registration. Voters must lower their masks so that the official can verify their identities against the photo on the card. They need to sanitize their hands and wear the disposable gloves provided before receiving the ballot paper. Next, they will proceed to the voting booth where they can use the new self-inking pen or their own pens. After folding, and dropping the ballot paper into the ballot box, they can dispose of their gloves and then leave the polling station. Hand sanitizers will be available and safe distancing will practice throughout the entire process. Common touch points will be sanitized every half hour. Voters who are unwell are advised to stay home and not come out to vote. They need not worry about risking their right to vote in future elections. The Elections Department says they can digitally restore their name to the electoral roll and indicate they were unwell. It has previously also said that those on stay home notice at designated facilities will vote at special polling stations away from other voters. For other affected voters, such as those on sick leave for acute respiratory symptoms or those serving stay-home notice at home, it will decide based on guidelines for the prevailing COVID-19 situation at the time. Now, the Elections Department will also step up voter education on these measures, including on TV and radio and advertisements on print media and other platforms. All households will receive a brochure on safe voting at the election, which must be held next April. The Elections Department has encouraged candidates and their election agents to use its digital services to prepare the necessary documents required for nomination. It's also laid out the what additional safety measures will be in place on nomination day. The digital services will be available at the Elections Department website and will be available once the writ of election is issued. Candidates who prefer to submit forms in hard copy can continue to do so, but they should download and print forms from the website instead of obtaining the forms in person. If a candidate is certified to be unwell on nomination day, a representative with the power of attorney can be authorised to file the nomination papers on his or her behalf. Safety measures like temperature screening and contact tracing will be in place at the nomination centres. If candidates are found to have fever or respiratory symptoms, they will be directed to a separate area for nomination. They can inspect the nomination papers of other candidates at the separate area. Candidates and subscribers will also observe a one-metre distancing rule when interacting with election officials. Rallies, walkabouts and house-to-house -house visits can continue during campaigning, but the Elections Department said guidelines will be issued in time for parties to prepare. 
They will take guidance from the Health Ministry's prevailing guidelines on safe distancing and safe management. These guidelines will be released on the day the writ of election is issued, at the latest. As in past elections, campaigning activities on the internet can continue. Takes place during the pandemic, it's expected fewer people will be allowed at rallies due to safe distancing. This likely means that candidates will take their campaigns online. But this time, they will have to declare if online advertisements have been paid for and who paid for them. The legislative amendments are aimed at increasing transparency and accountability. Fake information spread through paid advertisements on social media and false accounts carrying disinformation are some ways that election advertising has been misused in other countries. And that's why Singapore's Elections Department is introducing amendments to strengthen laws on paid internet election advertising, or IEA. Previously, candidates already needed to make an online declaration stating all platforms they're using for IEA. Now they'll have to indicate more details, such as whether they're using paid IEA, the type of service used, the period that such ads will run, the publisher, as well as the source of funding. The IEA must also make it clear who it was paid by, the candidate, party or authorised third-party campaigner. In the ad on the left, party XYZ clearly states that they sponsored the ad. To ensure accountability, those who are not authorised cannot put up paid IEA. So the ad on the right will not be allowed if the sponsor GHI is not authorised by candidate ABC to publish paid ads. That said, those who are not authorised by the candidate can still publish unpaid IEA. Under the amendments, expenses on paid IEA must now also be broken down clearly. Both paid and unpaid IEA will still be banned on cooling off day and polling day. Changes have also been made to other forms of election advertising like posters and banners. These will have to display allotted symbols and keep to streamlined maximum sizes. Candidates will have to pay $50 for each removal of the poster or banner that breaches the rules. Well, several political parties have since responded to the release of the election guidelines. The People's Action Party says it's studying the proposed guidelines carefully and will adhere to them fully. Opposition party Singapore Democratic Party has made some suggestions on its website. One of them calls for an extension of the period between the issuing of the writ of election and nomination day from 5 to 10 days. It says this allows parties to organise their campaigns and make the logistical preparations. The Progress Singapore Party noted that additional TV broadcast time for candidates and parties may be allowed if large group activities are still being restricted by health ministry guidelines after the writ is issued. It called for the terms on how the additional time is to be calculated to be stated clearly. Deputy Prime Minister Heng Sui Kiat says the upcoming general election will set directions for Singapore to prepare for significant changes in the next five to ten years. In an interview with The Straits Times, Mr Heng said, now is a time that goes beyond party politics and elections. He also commended Workers' Party Chief Pritam Singh's comments that partisan politics should take a back seat. As Singapore continues to fight COVID-19 on many fronts, Mr Heng added that people must first and foremost look forward and identify what are the dangers and opportunities ahead and focus on the coming days and months. The government has drawn heavily on past reserves in four separate budgets to help workers through the COVID-19 pandemic. Mr Heng said the government will have to carefully study options to rebuild the reserves. And this includes the possibility of increasing the contribution of net investments. But it has to be studied carefully and there is no need to do so at the moment. Mr Heng says his key focus now is on strengthening the economy. If it bounces back faster and stronger, then revenue will also grow, whether it's in the form of taxes, GST or stamp duty. Mr Heng says Singapore is already seeing a decline in GST and stamp duty as people spend less because of COVID-19. But he is confident that the sentiment-sensitive ones will recover when the economy bounces back.